Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to St. Olaf for the celebration of the 25th Sunday in Ordinary Time. A special welcome to any visitors among us. We also welcome all who are watching this liturgy via the live stream and the television broadcast. Our presider is Father Kevin Kenny. As a precaution against the spread of COVID-19, congregational singing is discouraged. You may gently speak the texts or hum softly. Please wear your mask throughout the liturgy and maintain social distancing. There will be a second collection today for Lebanon Emergency Relief to assist with suffering from the explosion in August. It will take place immediately following the regular collection. With respect for the celebration of the Mass, please silence all cell phones and electronic devices at this time. Please stand as we begin our liturgy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen. Good morning. As so we gather today to celebrate the sacred mysteries, we recognize how generous God is to us. God's mercy and grace is overflowing. And we can accept that when we open our hearts to reveal to God our sinfulness, and we are sorry for our sins, and that we desire to change our lives to follow Jesus more closely. Let us take a moment as we begin this liturgy to receive the grace, mercy, and forgiveness that we need. Lord Jesus, you came into the world to call sinners. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the hearts of all the contract. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. O God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts we may merit to obtain eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way and the wicked his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy. To our God, who is generous in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, Christ will be magnified in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, life is Christ, and death is gain. If I go on living in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me and I do not know which I shall choose. I am caught between the two. 
I long to depart this life and be with Christ, for that is far better. Yet, that I remain in the flesh is more necessary for your benefit. Only conduct yourselves in a way worthy of the gospel of Christ. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out at dawn to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with them for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. Going out about nine o'clock, the landowner saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said to them, you two go into my vineyard and I will give you what is just. So they went off. And he went out again around noon and around three o'clock and did likewise. Going out about five o'clock, the landowner found others standing around and said to them, why do you stand here idle all day? They answered, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you too go into my vineyard. When it was evening, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, Summon the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and ending with the first. When those who had started about five o'clock came, each received the usual daily wage. So when the first came, they thought that they would receive more, but each of them also got the usual wage. And on receiving it, they grumbled against the landowner saying, these last ones worked only for one hour, and you, made, you have made them equal to us, who bore the day's burden and the heat. He said to one of them in reply, My friend, I am not cheating you. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what is yours and go. What if I wish to give this last one the same as you? Or am I not free to do as I wish with my own money? Are you envious because I am generous? Thus the last shall be first, and the first will be last. The Gospel of our Lord. Again, we welcome all of you who are here present with us, those who are watching on live stream, and those who will be joining us by our television broadcast later today or tomorrow morning. Conduct yourselves, Paul says, in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. 
Paul is writing from prison to the Philippians. He will probably be sentenced to death. So he juggles between life and death, knowing that he longs to be with the Lord Jesus, longs to be close to God, as hopefully you and I do in life. Look forward to that day when we will be with Jesus. But in the meantime, how do we bear fruit? How do we bring forth in our lives the goodness that God has given to us? By conducting ourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that is why on Sundays when we come, and maybe during the week when we listen to the gospels, we are invited to put them into practice in our lives. So how do you and I live in a manner worthy of the gospel of Jesus Christ? Precisely as that parable is told today. Many commentators said this is a very difficult gospel for people to accept, for preachers to preach upon. But it is one of the ones I love the most. Why? Because it gives us great hope. Sure, you and I can grumble if we've started as a child working for the Lord and in the heat of the day kept trying to live right, kept trying to do what we're supposed to do, kept trying to keep the precepts and the laws and the commands of God. But were we happy? Did we find joy in doing so? And then we have our neighbor over here who led, oh, a life worth a telenovela, no? One of those soap operas. But yet on his conversion, on his deathbed, he sought God's mercy and God gave it to him. So he went to heaven before us. And when we got there, we were shocked to see him there. We thought to ourselves, what is he doing here? And you know what? He looked at you and me and said, what are they doing here? How do we live our lives? How do we conduct ourselves? to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Are we compassionate? Are we forgiving? How does Jesus teach us in the gospel to reach out to our neighbor, to love the sinners, to embrace those who are unembraceable in society, to feed the hungry, to heal the sick, to be compassionate, and forgiving and to treat others the way that we want to be treated as well and that is why in our opening collect today the precepts of God's law are based on loving God and our neighbor and so do we love God in our life we've been challenged to do that over these last weeks in Matthew's gospel challenged to love God above all in our lives and then to bring that love to our neighbor and how do we do that how do we in our lives bring that love to our neighbor? By being good Catholics, good Christians, that in our lives we live according to the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it is in that gospel that you and I are invited as well to open ourselves to God's mercy. Because we do not know how God thinks or God's ways. They're much greater than ours. But the people of Israel in our first reading today were going to be led from their slavery in Babylon back into the promised land. And why would God want to do that when we've turned our back on God? Because God is forever with us. God's promise is that God will be our God till the end times. And even if we today have turned our back on God, God has not abandoned us. And as little by little we return to seeing God's presence in our midst. How do we see that? We see that by love of neighbor, by the love and compassion that we receive from others and that we ourselves give. And we see those small little miracles that happened every day as people come back to faith. God is generous. God's mercy and forgiveness is there. And so, yes, you and I, if we went out in the first hour to work in the heat of the day in the vineyard and somebody came in at the last moment, worked an hour and got the same pay as we, yes, 
we'd put our foot down. Yes, we would argue. Yes, we would want to unionize or something to make sure that everything was just, was fair. So it is with sinners. Why can this person be forgiven after the horrible things that person did? And I tried to live my life the best I could. And we both get to go to heaven. Why didn't I just go out and live my life having fun, bodily, earthly pleasures, doing what I wanted to do? You and I know if we've ever tried that. Yeah, it works for a while, but we're never happy. We're never satisfied. But when we come back to the Lord, when we seek God's mercy and forgiveness, when we're filled with that grace within us, then, yes, our hearts are turned to the one who gave of himself for us, Jesus Christ, who feeds us with his body, that nourishes us to go forth into the world and to conduct ourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So we need to look at our lives and ask, how am I living? How am I treating others? How do I judge? How do I forgive? And do I love God and my neighbor? And you and I know in our cities today, the respect of life is not very strong. A lot of destruction, a lot of taking of life. And why is that? Is that living according to the gospel of Jesus Christ? No. But it's going to take you and I, who have made that commitment in our life to follow Jesus Christ, to conduct ourselves worthy in a manner of the gospel of Jesus Christ, to look at our lives and to say, do I judge others? Do I treat others badly? Do I ignore others and around me? Do I judge those in the marketplace who are still there at noon, three in the afternoon, five in the afternoon, that they're too lazy to work, rather than listening to them say, nobody would hire me, why? color of my skin, my gender, overeducated, undereducated. But when will we come to accept all for who we are? When will we come to accept that you and I are loved by God and God will never, never, ever abandon us, that God is always there for us? And when we recognize that love of God in our lives, that God will offer us abundant mercy and grace. Then, yes, we can forgive ourselves for whatever it is we need to forgive ourselves of. We can be compassionate to others as God has been compassionate to us. We can reach out and give of what we have been given. So then what is measured back to us is what we measure out to others. And so hopefully today, we take that clue from Paul that between life and death, yes, we all hope one day to be in eternal glory. And if you are not sure of that, that you're going to heaven, examine your life. Seek God's mercy and forgiveness because the promise is there that all who believe in Jesus Christ may have eternal life. All who eat of his body may have eternal life. That hope is there for us. And God's mercy truly is proven in the parable we hear in Matthew's Gospel today, that God is generous. And should you be envious of God's generosity? Humanly, we say, yes. Why can God forgive this one after the horrible things that they have done if they have a conversion of heart? But yet we pray for our children, our grandchildren, our brothers, our sisters to come back to faith, to come back to the church. We pray that they will know of God's mercy and forgiveness and know that, yes, God has not abandoned them even though they may have walked away from God for a while, there's always hope that they will come back. So let us live in that hope today. And let us conduct ourselves in a way of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And when we do so, let us find that joy, that compassion, in the midst of struggles, in the midst of pain, that joy that we get from living the gospel of Jesus Christ, knowing that we will be shunned at times in our world today because of that. But we know that we do it for the glory of God. We do it. Why? Because we have received Jesus into our lives and we have accepted Jesus as our Lord and that Jesus leads and guides us in all that we do. Lord, listen to us today. Open our hearts. 
Be generous, be kind, and know that when we follow the Lord, we can conduct ourselves worthy of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Then we can, as always, hopefully, leave filled with joy, skipping down the street, so that the world will know that God is still with us, that God's mercy is truly gen generous, and in our lives we have felt that presence, and we desire and truly want to share that with others. And together, let us stand and proclaim that in which we do believe. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, who was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now bring our prayers to God for the world, our country, and our community. For all church leaders, that they may lead us to work tirelessly for those in need and the most vulnerable in our world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the universal mission of the Church, that, like Paul and the other apostles, we may follow Christ to the cross and so bring light and peace to the nations for all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all people affected by disasters, both natural and man-made, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer from COVID-19 and all the sick and their caregivers, that they will receive comfort and healing, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially our loved ones and those who have lost their lives to COVID-19, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And I invite everyone to join in praying the Archdiocesan Synod Prayer. Come, Holy Spirit, make our ears to hear, make our eyes to see, make our mouths to speak, make our hearts to see, make our hands to reach out and touch the world with your love. Amen. Mary, Mother of the Church, pray for us. Just a reminder that there will be a second collection today for Lebanon Emergency Relief to assist with suffering from the explosion in August. This collection will take place immediately following the regular collection.
Pray, my sisters and brothers, that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so, with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. You are holy indeed, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. 
Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and the blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. And may he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. And may this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, Bernard, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children, scattered throughout the world. And to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Jesus Christ, our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who sent your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. Amen. Let us offer to each other an appropriate sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be. The distribution of the body of Christ will take place after the final blessing. Let us pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those renew with this sacrament, that we may come po to possess your redemption, both in mystery and in the manner of our life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. You're all invited to join us for the St. Olaf of Ministry and Music event. That is fast approaching. It will be held on Thursday, October 1st at 7 o'clock p.m. This year event will be live streamed for all to view from anywhere in the world. Music of the 30s and 40s will be provided by Sisters of Swing in Concert. Parishioners and friends of St. Olaf received invitations in the mail, including envelopes for donations. You may also check the parish website for details. The goal of this one-hour live stream event is to create fun from a distance and build the St. Olaf Reserve Fund. Get ready to tap your toes and share a bit of your treasure for a good cause. To help us plan 
we ask that you register by September 25th on the St. Olaf website. There is no fee to register for this event. And please prayerfully consider making a donation to the St. Olaf Reserve Fund, which is very important during this time of the pandemic that we have that reserve ready in case something happens. We are very grateful, grateful for the many generous benefactors and donors and parishioners and friends that have continued to contribute to the daily ongoing needs of St. Olaf. And you may make a donation by returning the envelope you received in the mail or by giving to the St. Olaf website under the Music and Ministry link. We hope that you are able to join us virtually for this fun event from wherever you may be. And we invite you to send the link to all your friends around the world to join us on that evening. And like last year, you may even find a few surprises for the event. And you won't know what that surprise may be unless you register by September 25th. So please, register online by September 25th to find the first surprise of this wonderful event that we will have. And if you were not ready to contribute to the second collection today, to the Lebanon Emergency Relief Fund, feel free to send that money into the parish as well, and we will forward that on to the Archdiocese who sends it to the Catholic Relief Services. And again, I thank you for joining us this morning, whether here present, all you lovely faces behind those masks, those of us joining us on live streaming today, and those who will be watching our television broadcast. We appreciate your prayers, your support, and your great love. So may we all conduct ourselves in the way of the gospel today by sharing God's compassion with one another. And to receive the body of Christ this morning, those of you at home spiritually and those here present physically, you may come and approach one of the communion stations. Use the hand sanitizer before reaching the station if you wish. Approach the station with your mask on, with your hands as flat as possible to put them underneath the station to receive the body of Christ. And after saying amen, to remove your mask and to receive the body of Christ. And may that body of Christ nourish us today to continue to accept and acknowledge God's love in our life and to be free to share that with others. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in the peace and in the love of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God.